Hello everyone, today's track is going to be Alendronate, also known as Fosamax. So we'll start with patient education. So Alendronate is used to prevent and treat soft brittle bones or treat Paget's disease. It comes in multiple formulation. We have tablets, effervescent tabs, and liquid solution. You're going to want to take your medication on an empty stomach at least 30 minutes before the first food, drink, or drug of the day. Try not to sit down for at least 30 minutes after taking this drug and make sure to take it with plain water only. Avoid taking it with mineral water, milk, or any other types of drinks. And for effervescent tabs, make sure to dissolve it in room temperature water only. Some common side effects that you may experience with this medication includes constipation, diarrhea, stomach pain, upset stomach, headache, muscle or joint pain, and even though it may be rare, some people may experience a very bad side effect, which includes signs of allergic reaction, signs of low calcium levels, chest pain, trouble swallowing or sore throat, and very bad joint or muscle pain. This drug may cause jawbone problems too, and the risk may be higher with longer use, cancer, people who have cancer, dental problems, anemia, blood clots, or infection. Now for some background, alendronate is a bisphosphonate, which inhibits bone resorption via action on osteoclasts or on osteoclast precursors. The drug decreases the rate of bone resorption, leading to an indirect increase in bone mineral density. In Paget's disease, which is a disease characterized by disordered resorption and formation of bone, alendronate's inhibition of resorption leads to an indirect decrease in bone formation. Now for indication, alendronate is used for Paget's disease. For symptomatic patients with active disease, you're going to want to give them 40 milligrams once daily for six months. And if they need retreatment, a second course of 40 milligrams orally once daily for six months may be considered um, after post-treatment evaluation. And then we have indication for osteoporosis as a fracture risk reduction. So with patients with high fracture risk, this includes history of fragility fracture or males above 50 years of age and postmenopausal females with T-score of negative 2.5 or lower. They can have a treatment of 70 milligrams once weekly or 10 milligrams once daily. And then for prevention, they can use 35 milligrams once weekly or 5 milligrams daily. For people who will be receiving systemic glucocorticoid therapy for at least three months at a prednisone dose of more than 7.5 milligrams a day or its equivalent, um, the prevention or treatment for this off-label use is going to be 70 milligrams once weekly and the duration of therapy should be individualized based on continuation of glucocorticoid therapy and fracture risk. And then we also have prostate cancer, um, bone, loss, bone loss associated with androgen deprivation ther therapy. Um, alendronate can be an alternative agent. So it's for use in males without bone metastasis treated with long-term androgen deprivation therapy who are at elevated risk of osteoporotic fracture. Now you can, um, they can use 70 milligrams once weekly, but some experts recommend against the use of alendronate for this indication um, unless the preferred agent are unavailable or inappropriate. Now for dose adjustments for altered kidney function, creatinine clearance of more than 35 milliliters per minute, there's no dosage adjustment necessary, but for creatinine clearance less than 35 milliliters per minute, the use is not recommended. 
And then patients who are on hemodialysis and peritoneal dialysis, it's also not recommended. Now we're going to go ahead and talk about adverse events. So as mentioned before, the common side effects include abdominal pain, acid regurgitation, flatulence, constipation, and diarrhea. Now for contraindications, it's contraindicated for people who have hypersensitivity to alendronate or any components of the formulation, hypocalcemia, abnormalities of the esophagus, which may delay esophageal emptying, and then patients who have the inability to stand or sit upright for at least 30 minutes and increased risk of aspiration. Now for warnings, we have concerns related to adverse effects, so which includes bone joint pain, um, or muscle pain and then we have disease related concerns so avoid oral bisphosphonates after bariatric surgery because it results in inadequate oral absorption and potential anastomic ulceration may occur if therapy is indicated iv administration is recommended and for dosage form issues each effervescent tab contains 603 milligrams of sodium, so use it with caution, especially in patients who need to follow a sodium-restricted diet. Now for severe adverse events, we have atypical femur fracture, or AFF. It's been reported with bisphosphonate use, including alendronate. So the benefit of therapy generally outweighs the absolute risk of AFF within the first five years of treatment, especially in patients with high fracture risk. The mechanism of action is time-related. Long-term suppression of bone turnover may be primarily responsible, and onset can be delayed. Most fractures have occurred in patients receiving alendronate for at least five years. Patients may experience podromal pain weeks or months before the fracture. Now, risk factors for this adverse event includes long-term treatment, um, if you're of Asian race, femoral bowing, or glucocorticoid use of more than one year. And then we have GI mucosal irritation that may cause esophagitis, dysphagia, um, ulcer or erosive esophagitis mechanism. The GI mucosal irritation is secondary to the local effect of alendronate on the gastric mucosa. Onset varies. It's dependent upon the type of mucosal injury, but case reports have noted onset within two days to 12 months after initiation. The risk factors include incorrect administration technique, older adults, and concurrent NSAIDs or antithrombotic use or any prior GI issues. And then while transient decrease of serum calcium is expected with use of alendronate, it's secondary to their mechanism of action. Cases of symptomatic hypocalcemia have been reported. So the mechanism of action it, by decreasing osteoclast activity Calcium is not released into the bloodstream, causing a transient decrease in blood calcium. The onset varies. Case reports have noted onset of symptomatic hypocalcemia within 10 days to 12 weeks of initiation. Risk factors include baseline hypocalcemia, impaired kidney function, impaired parathyroid function, IV bisphosphonates, and vitamin D deficiency. And then lastly, we have the osteonecrosis of the jaw, or ONJ. It's most commonly reversible and not life-threatening. The mechanism is dose and time related. Exact mechanism is unknown, but it could be from oversuppression of bone turnover, or it could be from mucosal toxicity and infection, 
onset varies. It can be spontaneous or after insults such as tooth extraction and or dental implant procedure. It has a lot of risk factors if patient has alcohol use disorder, they have anemia, cancer, if there are they are on anti-cancer therapy, corticosteroid therapy, if they have dental extraction, diabetes, extended duration of bisphosphonate use, high dose of IV bisphosphonate use, oral surgery, poor oral hygiene, um, tobacco smoking, radiotherapy to head and neck, or poorly fitting dental appliance. But besides that, that's everything about alendronate. Thank you.